It's a beautiful almost spring day here in Trustville, Alabama, and I trust all of you watching this video are having a great day yourselves. Welcome to the Hitchcock Maddox Financial Partners Financial Planning Simplified video series, and I want to pick up where we left off a few weeks back with the introduction to a series on alternative investments, alternative asset classes. So as a recap and reminder to tie back to that previous video, what we're not talking about is more traditional asset classes like stocks, bonds, cash. So let's dive in a little bit here on a specific area or a specific asset class, and that is private equity and private debt. But before we do that, let's, let's do a little bit of a definitions here. So first of all, let's think about it like this. Equity is something that you own. Debt is something that is owed, okay? On the debt side, you can either be the lender or the borrower, okay? So let's just make sure we understand that concept. That's true across the board, no matter what it is, whether it's equity in a home, I, I, that's the portion of my home that I own, right? Financially, that's my ownership stake. If I have equity in a stock, that's ownership in that particular company, and vice versa, debt. If I'm a borrower, then I have a mortgage, for example, using the house analogy, I owe money to the bank. If I'm a lender, Okay, I could be a bond holder, right? I'm an investor in debt, meaning somebody else, another party, owes me money back plus interest. So on the private side, let's talk about this a little bit. Private equity is something that has really grown in the last 20 years. It's not a new concept, but it's something that has really come more into the forefront. Private equity firms have been out there. They dealt mostly or almost exclusively at first with institutional investors, big money, we'll call it. Uh, in the last 10 years, there's been this, con this concept of the democratization of investment, and there have been some creative firms out there that have brought that same type of access to a more traditional investor like you and me, okay, or, or individual families, um, folks that are out there, small businesses that maybe don't have $50 million or $100 million to invest. They have a smaller sum, but they like the asset class, all right? So we'll talk about that in a minute. Same thing on the debt side. So private equity, again, it's ownership in something, but this is ownership in companies that are not publicly traded. When you think about the New York Stock Exchange or the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones Industrial Average, these are all measuring public companies, things that have gone through what's called an initial public offering, and these are stocks that are traded day to day, intraday, all over, all over the planet, okay? So the General Electrics of the world, the Apples, the Coca-Colas, right? The Johnson & Johnson, the list goes on and on. All different types of companies, different products and services, but they're all public. Let's flip to the private side. The private side is still ownership in a company, but these are companies that are not traded as the ones we just discussed. Why would you want to own something like this? Well, there's a lot of reasons. If you look at the historical return, and I'm just talking concept here, big picture across, you know, big sweeping brush stroke across private equity, they actually have outperformed the S&P 500, okay? So if you look at the long-term track record of private equity, they've actually overperformed or outperformed the public markets generally speaking. Now, that doesn't come without risk. That's not to say that these are not, don't have risk in them. They do definitely have risk in a private company. It's just a different risk. Uh, the way you would access this, there's a lot of different types of syndicate investment groups where you can access a pool of money along with other investors and they go out there, this management team will go out there and they will do due diligence and research on companies that are looking for funding. Uh, they're looking for ownership and they want to share that responsibility and they need cash to do something, right? They need cash to expand their market share. They want to acquire another company. Maybe they want to expand their uh, market presence into a new geography and they need funds to do this. And they can bring in investor groups to do that with them. And one of the benefits that this company gets is usually expertise from a management firm that comes in and provides the funding, but they also provide influence, right? So for example, someone may sit on a board of directors. Someone may actually practically help make decisions for that business because they now have a vested interest. So we have investment tools or investment tools out there that are available to not necessarily anyone. So just keep in mind, this is still a little bit more of a, an exclusive investment vehicle. You just don't have to have $50 million anymore to do it. There's a smaller scale that you can uh, access. So whether this is appropriate for you or not still needs to be determined through some conversations, some questions about your financial plan with whomever it is you go to for that type of advice. But understand that these, these investments are, are out there. 
Uh, they don't move up and down with the indexes, like if you turn on CNBC or the business news, uh, but, but they still have valuations that are going on on an ongoing basis. So there's some advantages there. The disadvantages can be the fact that you're concentrating risk in a smaller basket of investments, right? If I go and buy a mutual fund, let's say, or an exchange traded fund that has hundreds of different positions in it, then I'm very diversified. If I go into a private equity investment that may only have 12 or 13 or 14 or 15 investments in it, you can see you know, what we're talking about. The debt on the debt side, so private debt, is just really the flip side of this. In many cases, uh, you can access uh, debt investments and they are not tied to a bank. It's not a traditional loan through a bank. It's nothing like that. But, but there are these same types of syndicates. And in fact, sometimes you can have firms that offer both private equity investments and private debt investments. Sometimes they can be blended together, but often they're separate. But on the debt side, you may say, well, why would I want that? Why would I not just go buy a bond? You know, buy a bond, individual bonds, or a, a basket of bonds through a mutual fund or an exchange traded fund index that, that, that tracks bonds. Why would I want this? Well, you might want it because in many cases, some cases, they may feature a higher distribution rate, okay? Again, there's risk with this, right? You're dealing with smaller companies, they're not public, so there's still definitely risk in these types of investments, but you may get a higher rate of return through cash flow, through private debt, than you would with a more traditional government bond or corporate bond that you might access in some other form or fashion. So just so you understand, these are non-traded asset classes, uh, and they're just a different way to diversify the portfolio. Institutions have been doing this for a long time, and it's something that some folks on an individual basis can now do because of these creative solutions that have been brought to the market. If you have any questions about any of these or any of the other videos we shoot, the concepts or, or subjects, feel free to reach out at any time. Until next time, Ian Maddox, HMFP.